Ticket Machine is the official ticket broker of Spartan Nation. No matter what you need a ticket for, border to border, coast to coast, the Ticket Machine is your ticket source. So whether you need to get into the hottest concerts, the best sporting events, you want the best seats in the house, or you just want to get in the door, when you want to go to any event that requires a ticket, anywhere, border to border, coast to coast, it's always theticketmachine.com. Theticketmachine.com, 517-655-3201. Check it out today at theticketmachine.com. Uh, I had a chance to to, uh, to review the films and everything. Pretty much like I said last night, you know, obviously turnovers had a big thing to do with this. And I think emotionally, uh, when you look at the turnovers, the emotional swing, uh, even though we hung in there, um, obviously when you score a touchdown and then all of a sudden there's a big turnaround and and it, it goes to, to their um, to their advantage and we start on the 20. They start on the 20 and they score. That's a big emotional swing. So, um, got to recollect ourselves, which I think we will do. Um, I'm just wondering about the, uh, the resiliency of your team. This kind of being the first test this year, uh, to see how they respond to adversity on the field. Is it, is it more challenging with the younger, uh, team or is it, uh, you know, kind of like you've done in the past? Well, I think, first of all, I, th- I think our team is, is, is a resilient group of people, you know, uh, we are young, and usually youth brings that res- resiliency with it. You know, we're going to improve, and certain guys are going to improve every single game that they have an opportunity. Um, you know, Kevin Jarvis, a true freshman. You know, Jordan Reed, a true freshman. Both played, I thought, very well. They p- both got, uh, I think one got 30-plus snaps. The other one got 20-some snaps. They're young players, um, offensive linemen, but they held their own in there, and they looked athletic. Uh, you know, the work he's going to continue to get better. He made some plays. And obviously he had a couple, couple turnovers that, you know, were very costly, but, you know, that goes with the position sometimes. Uh, so, but I do think we, we will, we'll be fine in that, in that area. I think we'll continue to play and I thought we continued to play and compete throughout the football game. So, um, but that answers the question. Chris Fry had his second big sack coming off that same edge there. It looked like he talked last night about that that being something he really worked on, his pass rushing skills, playing that position that Nikos Allen did so well there. What what have you seen from him in developing that skill? And is, is that becomes is he become somebody you guys want to move around and create opportunities to get to the quarterback? Yeah, Chris has done that here for a couple of years. I think uh, you know he's he sort of started doing that a little bit in fourteen actually, two thousand fourteen. So he's been that what we call money linebacker. You know in our Delta front, and he's a he's a cover guy at times, and he's a rush guy at times, and um, all those linebackers. The way we sort of do it is to is to give them different advantages and sort of different looks as they come. You know, they're, they're presented different defensive looks as we go. But he's a good player for us. He's been a good leader for us. Needs to continue to have a good year and um, and play well. I know that you do not talk about short-term injuries, but you have with us of ones that will be long or sustained. Is there any of those coming out of the game? Injuries? Yes, or long, long-term long uh, ones. I know you don't talk about short. No. No okay. long-term injuries. Okay. Thanks no long-term injuries, but with, with Joe Bocci, you know, he, he left the field twice, um, and he left the field once against Western. How concerning is it for your Mike guy to be? Coming off the field, banged up uh, multiple times uh, this past um, yesterday, and then the game before. Uh, well, you know, obviously it's concerning. You know, we had a, you know, he was cramping last night, so those were, that was the biggest concern. What were your thoughts? What was your final analysis of the run defense for your team last night when you went back to it? How did the run defense look overall? I thought there were too many creases. I thought we got outflanked a couple times, missed tackle. We didn't we didn't tackle as well as we had. Um, you know, credit Notre Dame. I think you got to give a lot of credit to Notre Dame and how they came in and played the football game. Um, no turnovers. Uh, the quarterbacks escaped a couple times. You know, and um, you know we got to be able to control him. And I thought Adams ran well, and Williams ran well. And I, th- I thought that you know although they didn't have a ton of yards rushing the football, um, I thought they. They ran the football pretty well. You know, they created situations where they moved the football. Um, but they, they outflanked us a couple of times, which, you know, we have to be able to, to handle from a from an adjustment standpoint, and then we missed some tackles. The times we got it, you know, we got turned a little bit in this game as opposed to playing a square, and we lost gap integrity, if that makes sense to everybody. 
Yeah, that that makes sense. Did that happen on the 14 yard touchdown? It looked like they ran a little like a cross block, like a trap thing that might have been kind of new for them. Was was that one of the times when you when you failed to stay on the south there? in the south end zone? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, we had a truck play, you know, a play that we had worked on, and um, we lost we lost the edge. The offensive line. Uh, you mentioned it last night that that you wanted to see more from them in the run game to, to help free up the backs. I guess looking back at the tape, uh, when, when you have so many guys in and out, and it seemed like it was a pretty concerted effort to do that, um, is, is that a point of emphasis right now? And what did you see off that tape from them? Well, I think, you know, um, as far as um, running the football, it's so it's 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 sort of intertwined between the offensive line. You know, you got to block as wide receivers. you got to, you know, you got to come in and crack blocks. Sometimes you dig people out. You also have your tight ends involved in, or an F or two tight ends, but there's a lot of other people involved in this. And you have moving fronts, moving fronts at times. And, you know, they're going to put more people in the box sometimes than, than, um, in the center box there that, than sometimes on, on scheme sometimes. So, uh, Notre Dame did a good job. You know, they got a six foot three and a half, six four guy, 290 pound guy, um, at defensive end. If you can control the C area, which is the tight end box. You know, it's tough to run the ball at times. And I think that what we've got to be able to do is, is get our tailbacks, you know, clean into the secondary a little bit more. You know, that may be on them. That may be on play selection sometimes. That may be on on um, execution sometimes because it's all interwoven and involved. Uh, but um, the more you, the more capable you are running the football, the better passing lanes is going to open up. But, um, you know, again, credit Notre Dame. They, they played square in there. We're playing with young players, you know, uh, really three a redshirt freshmen and two true freshmen in there, along with um, a senior, um, I guess, a sophomore and, and two two redshirt sophomores. So we're basically a young offensive line, but I think we have talent and we're going to grow. Uh, with every opportunity out there, we're, we grow. And um, like I said, I've been imp- I was impre- very impressed with those two freshmen for going out and playing in a game like this and. Um, knowing what to do and being able to um, execute. It looked like Hunter Risen gave you guys a little bit of a, uh, of a lift. Can you talk about the progress he's made in the last couple of weeks? Since uh, yeah. he had a little error, he bounced back pretty good from that error, it looks like, from a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, again, um, young players, you know, Hunter, true freshman, and uh, made some catches. Uh, I think he had maybe four catches, a couple of big plays, and they were sure-handed catches in traffic, so they were sort of 50-50 type things, a little bit of a run-after catch as well. Well, I thought Tristan Jackson got on track a little bit, so that was good to see. He made a couple catches. I think he had five, but a couple big plays. Um, and you know, in a passing game, there needs to be consistency. And you've got, and you know, um, our third down percentage was not bad, but you know, um, was not awful. But you know, it was a little, a little bit too little, too late as we went through through the thing. You know, I mean, the turnovers again, the turnovers hurt you so. You know, midway through the third quarter, you're trying to figure out, okay, how many how many different series are you going to have left in the game, and you got to score three touchdowns plus a field goal. So you're sitting there saying, okay, we need four series, so we got to we got to score quickly. So it, it sort of changes the game. You saw Dom Long a lot uh, on special teams. Is there any plans for him on defense yet? Yeah, we we, uh, we took the red shirt off of Dom Long. I think he's a very good athlete. He's proved to be a good tackler in practice. He's very gifted athletically. Um, so we'll continue to work him at safety. But, you know, he played on every special teams, along with Connor Hayward. So um, those are guys that that are playing on, you know, kick kickoff, punt return, punt, and um, kickoff return. Uh, Antoine Simmons played about 24 snaps or so. So, I mean, he played a lot as a true freshman. So, I think we have 11 true freshmen playing. They're good players. They're just young. Uh, I guess if you look at um, Andre Welsh as being the 12th freshman, we put him in there because he's he's done some things um, in practice that has been electrifying. So uh, we've talked about it. We've worked him a little bit. And uh, I thought, hey, let's see. Let's find out. And uh, so there may be an opportunity for him to play more. Uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna find out about that because he he can he can go, um, so we'll find out we'll see how he does in practice. But we wanted to give him an opportunity. Just had a quick question. Uh, I mean, I know every quarterback that you have is 
his own unique person, his own unique, uh, you know, abilities and stuff. But as you watch Brian uh, make, you know, progress and, and kind of go through here, are you seeing any similarities in him to maybe some of the other quarterbacks that you've had at Michigan State? Yeah, I think you always make comparisons. I think that um, in some ways he has, a, he's, he's a little bit like, <clears throat> he's confident like Brian Hoyer. Well, really all, all of our quarterbacks have been confident, but um, <clears throat> he's got a little bit of that. And then um, Kirk Cousins, in terms of his preparation, uh, I think has been alluded to before. And then I think he, you know, you know, he can make plays like Connor. So Connor Cook. So I think there's a little bit of those three things in there. And uh, I think he continues to get better. He can make plays. We just got to eliminate turnovers. Mark, it's Hondo. How concerned are you with Brian Lewerke's, you know, throwing off back feet, maybe sometimes not getting his feet set? I don't think it's talent. I think it's just youth. But is that something you go back and do extra work with Brad Salem on? Yeah. Excuse me. I'm getting a little cold here. But I think all quarterbacks, when you watch quarterbacks today, are throwing off of them. You know, they're they're put in – they're put in adverse situations in a game, you know, whether it's because of pass rush or moving in the pocket. So you're seeing guys, yeah, ideally you want to be able to throw off your front foot and all those things, and we're working on all those things. But but inadvertently, you know, there's so many different things that are happening to them in a the game that they've got to make decisions on the move relative to what coverage they're seeing or pass rush lanes or pass rush itself that he's going to have to get out of problems. I think he needs to calm himself sometimes. But there's other times where I think he does fine. So, I mean, it's a consistency thing. But I'm sure we can make up a highlight film where he looks he looks golden in every um, in every facet there from last night. And then there's another, other, other um, reel that probably he needs to improve greatly on. Um, number one is ball protection. So, but um, these are the growing pains we go through sometimes. Mark, I'm sure you were taking a close look at your team in the locker room after the game and so forth, and then today when you met again, I assume you met again today. Any early indications on uh, how they're starting to bounce back? Uh, what, what did you observe? Or what- uh, but last night in the locker room, you know, disappointed group. But as I said before, you have to remember now, we have 53 players that are freshmen on our free football team. And 76, I think, players that are sophomores or freshmen. So we're young, so the expectation is let's get ready to go and um, and compete. So nobody feels worse than our players. Nobody, not the not myself or anybody. Everybody feels badly. I'm not going to play the blame game or anything like that. Uh, we just simply have to eliminate the mistakes that are that we can eliminate. It's tough enough to win football games against a good opponent. Notre Dame is a good opponent when um, when you're doing everything right. So you have to eliminate the, the the situations where all of a sudden you're playing from behind because of a a turnover or such. And um, you know, LJ covered the ball up, crossing the goal line. It's as it's as simple as that. You've got to find the inches. It's as simple as the wide receiver on the jet motion carry out the fake and run a wheel route or block the guy, and the guy doesn't come in and make the tackle. It's as simple as that because he's got the ball covered up. With, with he's got the ball high. I mean, he's got the ball tight, and it's covered up with the other hand. But the guy makes a great play. Um, but that play doesn't have to happen with with these. You know, you just got to find the inches. Everybody counts. Is I, I guess my message.